fear and hope. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us over in the Quran that call upon him and this is the sign of a Muslim that he calls upon Allah with fear and hope together. How? When a person is fearing, what is he fearing? And when a person is hoping, what is he hoping? If we understand this statement, if we, if we understand this concept, what to fear and what to hope, then this will become very clear, very easy. <coughs> when you are performing an act of worship, when you are praying, you are giving talaqa, you are doing an act of worship, any act of worship, from the heart, from the tongue, or, or, or from your body, hope that Allah will accept this. Hope that Allah will show you mercy through this action. Allah will show mercy on you through this action. And fear that Allah will not accept it. What is the blessing or what is the point of benefit in this? If you will not hope, then who is Ar-Rahman? Who is Ar-Rahim? Who is Al-Ghafur? Who is Al-Khudud? So you must hope in him because he is the Rahman, he is the Rahim, he is the most merciful. And you must fear that your act of worship will be not will not be accepted so that you will not be arrogant. And we will come on this issue in detail in the future inshallah we will talk, we will talk about this. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Ghafir chapter 40, the verse number 3, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says over here. <coughs> That the forgiver of sin, look, uh, I will read the Arabic first because then it will be much more easier than Salah. Ghafir is Dumbi. Ghafir is Dumbi. He is a forgiver. He is a Ghafir is Dumbi. He is a forgiver of the sin. Waqabil is Tawbi. And he is the acceptor of repentance. No, nobody says Shadid is Yahab. And he is strong in punishment. Will this Paul, the owner of abundance of papers. Look how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is explaining himself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling about himself. He is a forgiver of sins. What is this? Mercy, Rahma. Is it? Is this Rahma that he is forgiver of sins? Is it? Yes. Okay. Is it Rahma that he is an acceptor of repentance? Is it? Yes. Is it not his fear that he is saying, but I am very strong in punishment? Is this Rahma that he when he is strong in punishment? No, it's not. This is something to be feared about. So when Allah when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that he is the one of Rahma, he also mentions his punishment so that a Muslim will not only believe in his Rahma and do whatever he does, rather he will also have the fear. If I do this, Allah will punish me. So these two states are combined together. That you must hope in his, in his mercy because he is the Tawabur Rahim. He is the one who accepts the Tawbah. He is the one who is Ghafur. He is the one who forgives. But he is Shadil Dabal. He is also very strong in punishment. Not only this, in chapter number 15, Surah Hijr, verse number 49 and 50, Allah SWT does the same thing again. When it says, Nabi Ibadi, tell them Ibadi. Nabi means news. Tell them the news. Naba. Tell them the news, give them the news. Ibadi to my slave, the slave of Allah. What news should we give him? Anni al Rahim. That verily I am the forgiver, the most merciful. This is verse number 49. Look at verse number 50, what he says. Wa'anna azabi wal azab al alim. But my punishment is very strong. My punishment is great. So over here of Allah does the same thing. First he mentioned his mercy. Then tell my Ibadi, tell my slave, I am the forgiver, the merciful. But I am also strong. I am also very strict in punishment. So the Quran also tells us that we have to have both these states. That we must have the hope in Allah's mercy and we also should fear his punishment and fear that he will not accept our worship. So this is the first point. Second point is the most interesting of all. Do not deviate in love, hope, and fear.
What do we mean by this not deviate? To not go astray in love, hope and fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What do we mean by this? <coughs> Number one. The one who worships Allah only by with the love, meaning he does not have hope, he does not have fear. He only loves Allah, nothing else. He is a Sufi. <coughs> he is a Sufi. How and why? <coughs> this thing was done by the Christians. They were only loving Allah or their so-called Ilah, Isa ibn Maryam والسلام, with only love. And because of this, what was the negative consequence? Can anyone tell me that if a person only loves Allah, he does not have the hope, he does not have the fear, what can be the negative outcome because of this? Can anyone think in 30 seconds and tell me what can be the possible outcome? Yes. Exactly. You will commission and you will not fear Allah. Rather you will say, no, Allah is Allah, Allah is Rahim. As you see these days among the people. They will commit sin, commit sin. Brother, why, why, why are you doing this? Allah is Mahfur, Allah is merciful. What, what, what's wrong? Allah is merciful. Allah will forgive me. This is what happens when you only have love. You don't have the hope and you don't have the fear. Because the negative consequence is that a person will not think about his actions. He will not change the errors. Rather he will just keep going on that path. And may Allah protect us from this disastrous fat army, inshallah. <coughs> <coughs> and also, <coughs> among the Muslims, you will see this thing among the Sufi and the Barelvi. The Barelvi and the Sufi. The Barelvi is a very, very, very big and famous sect in India and Pakistan, in the Asian part. Their beliefs are Whoever says that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a human being, he is a kafir. Why does say Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was not a human being? He was a nur min nur Allah. He was a light from the light of Allah. They are saying Prophet Muhammad is a part of Allah. This is what they say. And they say that the Messenger of Allah is a nur, he is a light. Now I will not go into the discussion about their beliefs and their proofs and refute them. This is not our topic. But the thing is that they accept their love for the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa says in Sayyid Bukhari Do not excessively praise me as a Christian praise Isa ibn Maryam alayhi wa Rather call me the slave of Allah and his Messenger because this is what I am. I am only a slave of Allah. Now what happens when a person exceeds in the love? Innovation. The first thing that happens is innovation. These days the Barelvi people or the Sufi people, you will see them, their so-called love for the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they will celebrate his birthday, Milad al Nabi. They will say, no, this is our love, to show our love. They would give food on that day. They would celebrate the Mi'raj, when Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went for Mi'raj, they would celebrate that day. And many other stuff. Only claiming that this is the love, this is our love. And what happens when you exceed in love? Innovation and sin. This is what happens. Because you will only think about love, nothing else. The love it will create that Allah loves me. Like the Christian say, Jesus loves me. He died from a sin. Because of that they will do whatever they want. They will drink, they will commit zina, they will gamble, they will take interest, whatever they will, they will eat for anything. Why? Jesus loves you. This is the same thing that you see in these kind of people. They will say, Allah loves me. Prophet Muhammad will love me. He will say, Miss Mahalfa. Why? Because they had only love in them, not hope and fear. <coughs> Second, the one who worships Allah. With only hope, who is he? Can anybody guess? He is a murgi. 
the one who only 